Hey everybody and welcome back to Swift Lessons. Today, very excited to welcome back to the channel, Chelsea Mitchell, how you doing? I'm well, sir, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks for being here. It's my pleasure. So some of you might remember Chelsea, she did a featured artist showcase for us a few months back and since then you've released an album. What else I have. Is going on? Um, my band Dirty Dollhouse put out Vinyl Child, finally, and uh, it's available on vinyl, of course, CD, and um, for streaming. You can go to dirtydollhousemusic.com to find out about upcoming gigs, maybe get yourself a t-shirt, um, and just see what's up in our world. <laughs> cool, so head over to dirtydollhousemusic.com, get yourself a t-shirt, get yourself Vinyl Child on vinyl. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, you can jam along with us. We're gonna be playing for you the Patsy Cline classic, Crazy. We're also going to be doing a separate video on I Fall to Pieces. So we're gonna do a full demonstration of those tunes, then I'm gonna break them down for you step by step. Ready to get started? I'm ready. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay, close look at the fretboard, getting started with our intro section. For this tune, we're in standard tuning. We have a capo here in the first fret, and that puts us in the key of B flat major. Though for ease of learning, we're going to discuss this song as if we're in the key of A, because we're playing in A position. Real quick, before we get started, I just want to thank Chelsea Mitchell for coming in. That was a beautiful performance. And for those of you who have uh, enjoyed her voice and her various performances on this channel, you can head over to DirtyDollHouseMusic.com and uh, you'll be able to access some of her original music, which is fantastic. Okay, let's get started with the full demonstration of this intersection, and then I'll break it down for you. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three. Okay, let's break that down. Okay, breaking down my interpretation of this intro for solo performance. I began with a somewhat unconventional form of my A major chord, using my ring finger to bar across the D string, G string, and the B string second fret relative to the capo. Okay, A major. Now I'm gonna have a standard country style strumming pattern in mind. Bass down, bass up, down. Okay, you can count that too. One, two, three, and four, and. That's a very common, very important strumming pattern, one that you can use throughout this tune. 
Okay, so I'm gonna have that pattern in mind as I play. One, two, three. After that third beat hitting the low E string open, I'm gonna play end a four, end a one. Walking chromatically, striking the D, G, and B strings. Just like that. Now, once I've gotten to this D major chord, uh, this bar chord shape on the fifth fret rail to the capo, I'm gonna play down, down, bass, up, down, up. You put all that together and we have one, two, three, and a four, and a one, two, and three, and four, and. Okay, next we're going to descend. I'm switching to a D major seven chord. Okay, so I've got the 5th fret of the A string, I've got the 7th fret of the D string, I've got the 6th fret of the G string, and the 7th fret relative to the capo of the B string. I'm also barring on the high E string 5th fret. Now I'm going to use hybrid picking here, I'm going to drag the pick. Alright, you see how I did that? It was pick, and then when I got to the high E string, I'm using my middle finger for the high E string and the B string. That way I'm getting a little bit of that main melody in my chord shape. All right, I'm gonna go down a fret and play my minor seven chord shape. Okay, use those chord diagrams right here to guide you along to get these shapes down. All right, move that down a whole step and do the exact same picking technique. Okay, so we have. Alright, so those were two beats each. Next we're going to an E7 chord shape where I'm going to play. Alright, give it a little bit of a blues flavor. I'm using my pick to drag to the G string. My middle finger is actually grabbing that G string open and then hammering down to the first fret of the G string to make it major. And then I'm going to grab the high E string open with my ring finger. Okay, you put that entire intro together and we have one, two, Three, four, and one, two, three, and a four, and a one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and let it ring out. Okay, then that'll get you into the verse section. Okay, excellent work everybody. We have that intro section down. Now we're jumping into the verse section. For ease of learning, I'm gonna break this up into two different sections, progression A and also progression B. Demonstrating progression A, it's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, A major. G, F sharp. B minor. B minor major seven. B minor seven. Diminish and A. A sharp diminish. B minor seven and E seven to get us into progression B. All right, so let's make sure we know how many beats go with each chord and also what your strumming options are. I'll give you a few different options here. Getting started with the A major chord, we're going to start it off the exact same way we did our intro. One, two, three. Okay, if you want to throw an extra upstroke in there, we can play bass down a bass. Then on beat number four, throw in a quick G major bar chord shape. Then go down a half step to F sharp major for four beats. So one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four. So for the F sharp major chord, I'm just kind of lulting with some eighth notes, very, very soft. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, from there things are going to get very interesting. We're going to have a B minor, B minor major 7 to a B minor 7 chord shape. Really cool set of chord changes there. Okay, so we're going to have two beats on the B minor chord, two beats on this B minor, major seven. Okay. In this context, this chord sounds absolutely gorgeous. All right, so B minor. Add in some dissonance with the minor, major seven. And then we're gonna have four beats on the B minor seven chord shape. You can just let it swing with a combination of quarter notes and eighth notes. So one, two, and three, four, and. 
All right, and then the B minor seven, one, two, and three, and four, and. Or you could use a more finger style approach for these chord shapes here. So I like to go uh, A string, D string, double pluck on the G and B. Down, up, down, up gets me to the next line for E major. Okay, so if you're following along using your chord sheet and PDF study guide, I have all the chord progressions here uh, kind of written out for you. So now we're going on to the second line where we have E major going to C diminished. Here we're gonna play, just very simple. Okay, so that was E major, down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, on the C diminished chord shape. So that E major was six beats, and then we went to the C diminished for two beats. It could have just been uh, two measures of E major, but this makes it much more interesting. So one more time, one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and. Okay, another really interesting shape there with the C diminished chord shape. Make sure you're using your chord diagrams up there in the corner. All right, and then we're going to have a turnaround. A one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four and. Okay, so that was very simple. We have the A major chord shape. We're gonna do that picking pattern again. The bass note first, the D string, and then your double pluck. If you want to fill in the space a little bit more, you can play the open A string after that as you transition to the next shape. All right, then I'm gonna to go to an A sharp diminished and do the exact same thing. This is kind of an interesting shape. You might not know it. The first fret of the A string, the second fret of the D string, and the second fret of the B string. Everything from the A string down sounds great. All right, then I'm gonna to go to B minor seven. And then I'm gonna strike the uh, low E string open this time. And then I'm gonna go into E seven chord shape. One thing that you can do here is hit the bass, then do your little hammer on trick. Up, down, up. Okay, so put all that in the context we have. Right, that will get you into verse progression B. Okay, let's see if we can put all that together now with the lyrics. One, two, three, four. Crazy. I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. Now, that'll get you into the next half of our verse section. Okay, very well done, everybody. We have verse progression A down. Now we're jumping into verse progression B. This is basically going to be identical to what you just learned. The only difference is going to be the chordal walk-up at the end. So, this part's gonna sound like this with the lyrics. One, two, three, four. I knew you love me as long as you want. Here's where it's different. You leave me for somebody new. Wally. Okay, so everything was the same up until that E major chord. We're gonna have that for six beats before going to an E dominant seven chord. Now it's that tension that's going to lead us into another chordal walk up, starting with the A major. Okay, but going back to that E chord, we're gonna have that for six beats, and then two beats on the E7. Oh, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and then we have the walk up, A major. B minor seven. C diminished. 
and C sharp minor seven flat five. Okay, this is a very cool chord shape that you might not have used yet. It's kind of like a zigzag shape. Okay, so frets four, five, four, five. A string, D string, G string, and B string. Okay, so that walk up again. Okay, if you want to hit an extra bass note in between those, that'll sound very good. then that'll get you into the D major chord. So we're walking up to the D chord, and then that gets us into the bridge. Now let's see if we can play through the entirety of progression B. One, two, three, four. I knew you loved me as long as you wanted. Take a look at the bridge. Okay, tremendous work everybody. We have the intro and we have the verse sections complete. Now we're jumping into the bridge section. This part's pretty simple. It's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four. Worry. get yourself into the chorus section. Okay, so that was very, very simple. We have the D major chord. We're just going to apply that country style strum into it. If you want to start off with a full strum, that'll sound nice. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. So that's just bass, down, up, bass, down, up, bass, down, up, bass. Okay, then we're going to an A major chord. I'm gonna switch it up a little bit from what I did in the demonstration. I'm gonna bar my A chord. Okay, so here I'm gonna play bass, down, up, bass, down, then throw in a riff. This is pretty cool. Okay, so pretty simple. Down, up on the A chord. Bring it down a half step, down, up. Bring it back to position, down. Then the open A string, and then we're going to take apart that A sharp diminished chord. Okay, A string, D string, double pluck. Okay, you put that together real slow, you have. Kind of imitating the different instrumentation that you hear on the original track. Okay, then that will get you to a B dominant seven chord shape. Okay. We're going to alternate the bass on this. Okay, so my strum in there is bass, down, up, bass, up, down, up, bass, down, up, bass, up, down, up. Followed by the E major chord, then the E7 to get you to the tonic. Okay, one, two, three, four, E7. Okay, now here on this E7 chord, I like to throw in my pinky to the third fret of the B string, just to make it a little bit brighter. Then that'll get you into the chorus. Okay, let's put together that entire bridge section. One, two, three, four. Worry. Okay, now let's jump into our chorus section. Okay, very, very good everybody. We have the intro, we have the verse, and we have the bridge sections down. Now we're jumping into our chorus sections. Chorus one and chorus two. Now they're going to be different from one another because there's a half step key change in between them. Okay, jumping into chorus number one with a demonstration. This is going to begin the exact same way as our verse section. 
One, two, three, four. Crazy for thinking that my love could hold you. Now here's where it's different. D major seven. I'm crazy for trying, and I'm crazy for crying. break that down. Okay, so line number one, if you're following along using that chord sheet at patreon.com slash lessons, was played the exact same way as the verse, so nothing new there. But now we need to do that descending section. We're starting with D major seven. Okay, just barring across those three strings, G, B, and high E strings, second fret. Okay, then we're going to go to C sharp minor seven. Okay, there's your minor seven bar chord rooted off of the A string on the fourth fret. Take that down a whole step for B minor seven. And now we're going to play the chord that we were calling A sharp diminished, but now we're gonna call it B flat diminished because we're descending down, okay? So it's D, C sharp, B, and then B flat. Then we're gonna go back up to B minor seven. This is line number three of this chorus. Then we're going to E7, the five chord, followed by the A major chord, bass, down, and then thrown in an F7 sharp five. Okay, that dissonance is going to drive the progression up one half step for the key change. So I put all those chords together, I have. Okay, just letting those strums swing. Of course, I'm using a nice thin pick here, so it's not going to be overpowering. Okay, so just down, down, up, 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 and then the A major chord, bass, down, and then switching to that sharp five, we're just going to arpeggiate. Okay, so E, D, G, Okay, and that little arpeggio movement you can throw in on various chords whenever you really like. Maybe right here on the diminished. Don't forget about the hammer on option. Okay, just like that. Okay, now let's see if we can play through this entire chorus one half step up. Okay, congrats everybody, you're almost ready to perform. The last thing we need to learn is how to transpose that chorus up one half step. So we're getting started with the chord B flat major. Okay, it's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four. Crazy for thinking that my love could hold you. Trying and crazy for crying, and I'm crazy for love. Okay, let's break that down. Okay, breaking that down, all the strumming options are exactly the same as what we had before. Everything's just up a fret. We're starting off with the B flat major. One, two, and three. Then going to G sharp, fourth fret relative to the capo. And then going down a half step to G. Two, three, four. Okay, then we're going to have that minor, minor major seven, and minor seven transition here. Okay, so exactly what we played before for B, we're playing for C. Okay, that's line number one, if you're following along using that chord sheet, for chorus two. So, crazy for thinking that my love could C minor. C minor major seven and C minor seven. Now we have our descending section, all transposed one half step up. E flat major seven. 
Okay, I've got the first fret of the D string, barring across the third fret now of the G, B, and high E strings. Okay, I'm crazy for trying. All right, now take that minor seven bar chord shape, put it on the one, two, three, four, fifth fret. Okay, for D minor seven. Bring it down a whole step to C minor seven. Okay, so far you have, I'm crazy for trying and crazy for. All right, up next we have B diminished, crying. Okay, so that is second fret of the A string, the third fret of the D string, first fret of the G string, and we also have the third fret of the B string. It's that full diminished shape that we've been using throughout the song. Okay, now we have the first two lines. I'm crazy for trying, and I'm crazy for crying. All right, go back to the C minor seven, third fret minor shape, and I'm crazy for F dominant seven, love. All right, this is the first fret barred. We've got the third fret of the A string and the second fret of the G string. Here, I'm gonna treat it like I did my E7 chord. I'm gonna do a hammer on with the middle finger. Then grab the high E string. Okay, let that ring out. Then your singer will get you to the B flat major chord, where you could just end the tune because it's resolved, but we're going to pull from the intro and the original track and play. One, two, and three, chromatic. Okay, so very, very simple there. We're just having B flat going up to E flat major. So one, two, and three, that's where your chromatic's gonna start. And then you're gonna stop here on the dot. We're gonna have the uh, one, two, three, four, five, sixth fret relative to the capo. Bass, down, up, bass, down, up. And then go back to the B flat major chord to end the tune. Congratulations, everybody. You're ready to perform. All right, friends, thanks so much for checking out this lesson on Patsy Cline's Crazy. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. If you have a song that you would like for me to teach next, you can click on through to swiftguitar.com slash request and put in your suggestions now. Big thanks to my supporters at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. Hope you're enjoying all those extra resources. Thanks to you guys, I got many more lessons coming up. So keep checking in, please subscribe, please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia, saying happy picking.